Hello and welcome everyone. So I'll be explaining a code forces problem today. Uh, it's the educational round uh, 111 uh, rated for division 2 problem B named maximum cost deletion. Basically in this problem you're asked, basically you're given a string consisting of only two characters 0 and 1. Okay and what you have to do is you have to delete the string all the way down to nothingness okay so every character you have every character you have to delete but you have to do that in some order you, you are allowed to do that or you are allowed to delete those characters in some order which is they have stated here you could only choose some consecutive substring of equal characters and then you erase it from the string and when you erase that you will merge the remaining those parts or like the remaining parts together I'll explain it also uh, so don't worry about that okay okay now that we have to do we are allowed to do that operation to erase um, so as you can see we can always take some sub uh, like substring a consecutive substring of some characters even one character so we can always delete uh, the whole string but there's a condition here when you delete a substring of length let's say L you get a times L plus B points now what you have to find out here is really interesting which is uh, like the maximum number of points that you can score in total so you have to delete the substrings and make the whole input string empty in such a way that you get the maximum amount of points you need to maximize this part right think about it you need to maximize this part here right there a times l plus b now what's interesting is that if you look at the constraints here a and b can be negative number now that opens up uh, like two or three other possibilities that could happen now we might think that in general case we might think that if it hadn't been like negative numbers we would have taken uh, like the whole string as our options or we could even go through for each and every character anyway let's just break it down to the part uh, why this constraint is gonna direct us some of the ways that we can solve Also, we can uh, also I'm repeating once again that the constraints of a and b it can be negative number Okay, and it's quite small here uh, Okay, let's see and let's take take okay. Uh, let's just demonstrate here. Let's assume that uh, what was the condition a times L plus B right you will be given a you will be given B this is this L is the consecutive substring that you're gonna erase from that string now let's imagine uh, also one thing to notice is that this given string will only have zeros or ones so it opens up we could we could even see this string uh, let's take an example we could uh, I could demonstrate you more clearly if I uh, just draw it here like that let's take one 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 another zero maybe another zero 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 and maybe one 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 zero one maybe one maybe zero maybe one now this is string right there I could visualize this is string something like that uh, I could say that well I have two groups like first group has number of one this uh, and then comes the group of zero of array one and then comes the group of zero like sorry then comes the group of zero of one two three four members and then comes the group of three of group of three members another group of three members of same of group one okay another group of zero or group of two members of 
uh, like group zero. And for group one, here are another members we've got, like one, two, three, four. And for this, yeah, another group we, we are creating. So we're gonna direct or visualize the string uh, like that. If we could do that somehow, this will make our problem easier to understand. If you could see the problem or see the string like that, I hope you're getting for each and every like sequence that we're traversing, we're gonna create groups for zeros and ones until the other one comes. I hope you're getting that now. Well, uh, what we are allowed to do, we are allowed to do any sub. We are allowed to erase any substring from the string such that the characters each and every character should remain the same. So we have to clear out or like uh, erase equal length, uh, like consecutive substring of equal characters. So I could, e I could erase this um, substring. I could even erase this. I could even erase this, uh, this uh, substring, but I cannot do that because it conflicts the condition that we are given. Now, how do we approach this type of problem? First of all, a times l plus b. What does this refer? Now, a can be a can be less than zero. So if a is less than zero, it opens up two possibilities. I could either, like, if a is just think about it. If a is zero, like less than zero, what will be the most efficient um, option to do for me? Like. What's the most optimal approach that I can do if a is less than zero? Would uh, if I take l then uh, l a greater value that would would that give us a like optimal result if, if a is less than zero? I don't think so because if a is less than zero and if I take l a bigger value the times the the multiplication would cause uh, a, uh, would cause a much smaller value, right? Because minus times plus is definitely minus. We all know that. And a could be, if a is plus, then definitely if I take my substring part, a greater one or a substring, any substring that I'm erasing, if its size is greater, greater than zero or like much greater, uh, with respect to a is greater than zero, then it's gonna benefit our results. So we have we we just open two possibilities here. So instead of like checking out which one we're gonna deal with when, how how about we we just check for both of the conditions? How are we gonna do that? First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that we're gonna do three observations, which is the first one is that I'm going to delete each and every character one by one and I'm going to add the points A plus B. A plus B meaning by A times 1 plus B. Why 1? Because I'm each time um, like erasing one length of substring from the first uh, uh, like from the front of the array. Each time I'm doing that first, I'm erasing this, then I'm erasing this, and all the way up to finishing the whole array. This is the first condition. In this way, I'm managing. I don't even have to look for what values that I have for A and B. I can do all the possible ways, which are basically three possible ways. I'll show you how. The first one was what? I will just erase characters one by one from the front of the array. And then delayed the whole process. What's the second one? The second one could be I will delay the zeros like that maybe this part this, uh, like the zero groups uh, of members I will delay this and then I will delay this and then I will delay this and then I will delay this zero group. Now each time I'm gonna delay that I will also add or update my result as my points increases now when I do that after doing that what exactly happens we are left with ones 
Now, how are we going to deal with once? How is it going to give us the optimal result? Think about it. If I erase the zero members, what's left is this in-between member of once. Now, they have stated that when you erase some substring, you can merge exactly. That's what we're going to do. So, for zero groups, when I found, when I like found, uh, sorry, when, I'm, when I'm about to fi find like uh, this, these uh, small groups of zeros, and when I count my points for each individual group, after that, the ones that are left, all of them is going to contribute all together by merging. So after deleting these parts or erasing these parts, these all ones are going to merge together. And for that individual part, I'm going to deal another, this A times L plus B. Okay, I hope you get that. And what is the third condition? Similar to the second condition, condition uh, uh, similar to the second condition, just vice versa, which means you're going to delay the one the groups of ones and then individually the whole group of zeros at once so i hope you get that uh i hope i made you understand that uh still let's let's uh take, uh, take you to the code part how did we do that actually so we're going to take the test case and those values n and a and b and then the in yeah this part here this vector array is actually calculating this array itself I, i've told you that in order to visualize this part as groups taking that as a member variable of array uh, provides a much more convenient and a better result like you could easily observe what's happening here if you could just transfer or like convert that string to this array you will easily know that okay this is uh, the even parts or the even indexes of the values are referring to one groups uh, or like some groups and the odd parts or uh, the odd parts are like referring to the other groups so you could do both of the works separate time easily you don't have to work uh, like uh, you don't have to work on the strings anymore. You could easily work with the arrays just by creating this array where each and every index consecutively are referring to two different groups of members of this uh, of the same class uh, of the of the different class. Yeah, so this could be of class zero This could be of class one. This would be zero would be one or maybe this would be one or zero one or zero I hope you get that I'll take you to the code part that's exactly what we did. We just created that vector. Now, after creating that vector, our initial answer will always be a plus b times n. Now, a plus b times n is basically the first observation that I talked about. Now, for the rest of the two observations, we're going to deal with it. Now, this is the special case if the vector is already less than or equal to 2. Then we're just going to deal with the same thing, uh, like, like get the points because it doesn't matter how uh, how you do because oh we will only get like two different groups as two different classes of only one groups right so that's what uh, like vector this is the extra case i hope you get that why i'm actually uh, doing this if the group is like less than or equal to two because i know that for zeros i will have only one group of members for ones i will all also have one group of members now for the for the bigger part here part two and part three similarly for odd like for odd index i'm doing that the odd part and for even index i'm doing the even part there you go now after that just taking the maximum out of those two possible observations and inside this max i have the first observation here which is a plus b times n so yeah I hope I made you understand that. Till next time, goodbye.